All right, welcome to this uh, seventh session of Living in 3D. We are starting the third part of this message. We Our theme verse has been Matthew 22, 34 to 40. I'm going to give you a couple other scriptures here in a minute. But today we're going to talk about living in 3D, loving your frenemies, walking in favor. That's the topic we're going to talk about. Your frenemies. What are frenemies? They are friends that are undiscovered. Maybe they are adversarial to you. Maybe they're anonymous to you but you're about to discover them. Jesus talked about loving not just your neighbor, but loving your enemies. And we're going to talk about that as well. Matthew 22, 34 to 40. I'm going to give you a very, very brief synopsis, but you can watch all of these on YouTube. If you've missed any of them, we are a little bit behind on getting them posted because my editor was overloaded last week. So we're one week behind, but the next one should go up within the next day or so. And then this one within the next three to four days. So here we go, Matthew 22, 34 to 40. Also, we're going to look at Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3. They're going to be familiar verses to you, but I want to just get, let you get set up for that. Then Leviticus 19, <laughs> sounds scary, but it's not. Leviticus 19, verse starting with verse 9, and then Matthew 5. Just turn to those places for me. We'll get there eventually. It's going to be fun, painless. I will promise you that. Matthew 22, 20, 34 to 40. But when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and then one of them, one of them, a teacher of the law, asked a question, testing him, saying, Teacher, what is the great commandment in the law? He's trying to trip him up. Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. On these two commandments hang all of the law and the prophets. I love that Jesus goes a step further than his question. He said, which is the greatest commandment? But Jesus goes on to say, these two fulfill all of the law, all the prophets, everything from Genesis to Malachi, boom, in these statements, love God, love yourself, love your neighbor, living life in 3D. That's what we've been talking about. We talked about the three dimensions of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, three persons. We talked about the three dimensions of you, body, soul, spirit, one person, three parts. And we talked about how God is bringing us into relationships. So we're going to talk about three values of relationships. And we're going to talk in the next three weeks about three types of relationships, three types of neighbors. And so frenemies are the first type of neighbor we're going to talk about. This is important because we always go back to the beginning to see what it was supposed to be like. Remember when we talked about God, we went to Genesis where it said, God said, let us make man in our image. That's the divine dance of the Trinity, the Elohim of God talking together. Let us make man in our own image. Right there at the beginning, we see the nature and the character of God. And then we showed how the three dimensions of the three parts of man were present at creation and present at the fall, and that they felt man fell physically, spiritually, and in his soul, emotionally he fell, right? And Jesus came to restore us back. So let's go back to Genesis chapter one, first of all, because I want to talk about neighbors. We've got to look at the, the relationships that man and woman were supposed to be from the beginning and how they fell out of relationship. So some of this may be a recap for some of you in our online community, but I want to share this with you. Genesis 1, 4, and 5 talks about how God created the earth and his prophetic process of creation. I say that creation was a prophetic process and prophecy is a creative process. And I say it because of these verses. So I'm going to show you how creation was a prophetic process. And when I say that, that's to back up the fact that prophecy is a creative process. So Genesis 1, 4, and 5, it, God's about to create day, the first thing he creates, which also creates time. It also creates light and darkness. It also creates um, a, uh, it, an, 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 a, a place in which God can visit man because he needs to invade into time. And so Genesis 1, 4 to 5 says, and God saw the light and it was good. First thing he said, let there be light. He saw the light was good. He divided it from darkness, and he called the light day, and the darkness he called night. There was evening and morning the first day. So that's the first first we see. The first first is day. So the first thing God creates is day. Even though light 
was manifested from him. It wasn't day until he did these two things. What did he do? He saw the light and then he called the light day. So that tells us that there's a perception that needs to take place. And there's a proclamation that takes place that makes something a reality. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And what the heart believes and the mouth speaks becomes the reality for that person. And so it says God saw the light. That word is the Hebrew word ra, which is the word to perceptively see, to see things through perception. It's also the Hebrew word for prophet. The prophets were called seers. First in the book of First Samuel, they were ones who could see. So God is, he's exemplifying, he is demonstrating prophetic perception. He's, he's showing prophetic seeing. He looks at light, sees its potential, sees its purpose, and he proclaims it, and it becomes that. That's the second thing. He calls it day. The next time we see these two words come up is in just the next chapter, Genesis 2.19. It says that God formed out of the ground every beast of the field, the birds of the air, brought them to Adam to see. Same word, to perceive and then call them. So perception precedes proclamation, and then creation comes out of those things. Why, this is important for us to continue to reinforce because this has to do with how what we think about people will determine what we say to them, and what we say will become the reality of our life. Did you ever have to take one of those student teacher conferences? You know, um, I remember when one of my daughters <clears throat> got, we went to the student, com student conference. I think she was in kindergarten or first grade. And the teacher sat us down and said, your daughter has trouble reading. She n has a reading disability. That's what she said. That was her perception. And that was the words that came out of her mouth. But we know that perception and proclamation equals creation. And we said, uh-uh, no, 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 no. You don't have the power to speak over our kids. Only we do. We're her parents. So we say, no, our daughter doesn't have a problem. Our daughter is an opportunity for you to learn how to teach a different way. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to go on this journey with you. And we're going to discover the best way to teach our daughter how to read. And I can tell you that daughter is a straight A student in college right now. Why? Because we didn't let someone's perception and proclamation create something that God never intended. Oh, come on right there. You need to be shouting hallelujah because you have the power of life and death in your tongue. You have the ability to speak that over your children, and you can't let someone else do that. Amen? You believe that? It's true. Wow. Did you actually say that to the teacher? Yes, I did. We did. We worked with the teacher. She's not our enemy. Guess what? She became our friend. The point is, she wasn't our enemy. She just didn't have our perspective. And so we had to, we had to inform her perspective. And there's a way to do that without being adversarial. And that's exactly what we did. So, Here's what happens in the fall of man, Genesis 3, verses 11 and 12. Remember, man sinned. He looked at himself, saw he was naked. His perception of himself saw himself, his perception changed, and he became afraid of God. He became ashamed of himself. <clears throat> in verse 11, God said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you to that you should not, that you should not eat? And the man said, it's the woman that you gave me. She gave me of the tree and I ate. And then, of course, the, the woman said, the devil, the devil did it. The, it's the serpent who deceived me. Here we see, again, perception, proclamation. Why am I bringing these up? It's because it leads us to the, relate, the first neighbor that Adam and Eve had were each other. And so there was no one else to love, but, your, but that, that they were the only ones to love each other. And they became enemies potentially right there by their own words. I just want to show you what happened there, okay? Now, and that's right, Katie, I know you agree with that. Power of life and death is in the tongue. All right, so, so let's look at Leviticus because what God did was he came in and he put the law in place. And the law was in place for several reasons. We know ultimately it was to show them that they could not overcome sin on their own. They couldn't do it on their own. They needed God's help. 
but the law, the Ten Commandments, and the and the the other parts of the law, Leviticus here talks about, which means Leviticus means the law. It describes the relationship number one with God, the relationship with yourself, and the relationship with your neighbors. And if you look at that, it's love the Lord your God, remember the Sabbath, keep it holy, remember His name, keep His name, don't take His name in vain. The relationship with God, and then don't lie, don't steal. What's that? That's your relationship with yourself. And then we have here in Leviticus, he breaks down the law. We're going to talk about this because I'm going to take the, the, the parts of the law that talk about your relationship with others. I'm going to show you how Jesus deals with them and the power he gave you under grace to do what you couldn't do under the law. You couldn't do certain things. The law exposed the fact that you were sinful and it showed you that you needed God's grace and his divine enablement. And then under grace, God, Jesus came in and said, now here's what I want you to do. So let's look at Leviticus 9 through 18. This is a very interesting scripture, and I want you to see a few things. First of all, it says, when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not wholly reap the corners of the field, nor shall you gather the gleanings of your harvest. You shall not glean your vineyard, nor shall you gather every grape of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and the stranger, for I am the Lord your God. Remember Rahab, or excuse me, not Rahab, remember Ruth, who was a Moabitess, who married the, Naomi's uh, son, and he passed away, and Naomi had to come back from Moab and come back to Israel, and Ruth followed her. She said, your God will be my, your, my God, your people will be my people, and Ruth went back to Moab, and what did she do? She gleaned, because Boaz was fulfilling the law. Boaz became a kinsman redeemer, a type of Jesus. We, Ruth becomes a type of the church. She's gleaning from what was left over from the law. She's gleaning from what was left over from Judaism. She's gleaning. And then Boaz, the kinsman redeemer, comes and buys her back and gives her ownership of the whole vineyard, just like Jesus was our kinsman redeemer. Isn't that amazing? So Jesus is right here in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 9, even though it just sounds like it's gleaning. But it's telling you this, that because you were a stranger and an alien to God, and he was generous to you, when you're generous to those that are outside the kingdom, you actually empower them to bring them into the kingdom. So generosity is an evangelistic tool in the kingdom of God. Generosity is is a tool that flips someone from being an outsider to being an insider, from being a Moabite to being a kingdom person. Get it? Does that make sense? You with me here? Generosity. And so he goes on to say that you shall not steal nor deal, deal falsely nor lie to one another. You shall not swear by my name falsely, nor shall you profane the name of the Lord your God, for I am the Lord. You shall not cheat your neighbor. You shall not rob your neighbor. You shall The wages of him who is hired shall not remain with you until the morning. You shall not curse the deaf. You shall not put a stumbling block before the blind. You shall fear the Lord your God. You shall not do injustice in judgment. You shall not be part. You shall not be partial to the poor nor honor the person of the mighty. In righteousness you shall judge your neighbor. You shall go about as the talebearer among your people. Nor shall you take a stand against the life of your neighbor, for I am the Lord your God. You shall not hate your brother in your heart. You shall surely you shall surely rebuke your neighbor and not bear the sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the children of your people. But you will love your neighbor as you love yourself. There it is right now. That's where it came from. You get this? Here we are. So we have Jesus, who is like the kinsman redeemer, Boaz, and he plants a field. And in that field, there are people who, who harvest from the field, but there's a leftover. He says, leave the leftovers because the strangers and the aliens are coming in. The Gentiles are coming in. Those outside of the father's house are coming in. Those who are not Abraham's seed will become Abraham's seed. They're coming in. And so, so generosity becomes a value of the kingdom of God. So we want to develop. I want to talk about developing the values of Jesus. That's what we're going to talk about. And there's three values I want that are here in Leviticus 9 that Jesus reinforces in Matthew chapter 5. 
And there's three values that I want to us to talk, talk about as a community. The first one is honor, that you, when they honored the people that were weaker, when they honored people that were disabled, when they honored people that were poor, God did something to bring them into his household. The second thing is generosity. When they bless those who cursed them, when they left blessing for those who didn't bless them, it actually released favor on their life. And the third one is encouragement. We're going to talk about this, and Kim's going to come back in just a minute, and we're going to share with you some of the things that we've been learning. So we are going to, uh, first of all, I want to tell you a little story <clears throat> that exemplifies this and how this has kind of played out in our life. You may not know this, but for several years, uh, Kim and I, trained people in the gifts of the spirit in our classes, in our weekend seminars. In fact, early on in our ministry, I was invited to speak at a new age spiritist church. It was very unusual and people got saved and people got healed there. And this opened up an opportunity for me to start to be invited to large alternative festivals where there were healing rooms um, they were not Christian healing rooms. And for a three-year period of time, we trained people and we equipped them with the gifts of healing. We equipped, equipped them with the gifts of prophecy, equipped them with the gifts of um, deliverance, setting people free. And we took them to some of the largest um, interfaith, uh, new age health festivals around the country, West, California, um, Utah, Idaho, and the largest we went to was in the Philadelphia area, the Valley Forge Convention Center. We were there in 2006 or 2007. This is a great story because it's a story of how Kim and I were working together on this to love your neighbor. And the reason I wanted her to come back and share is because she has one of the greatest gifts for loving our neighbors <laughs> than of anybody I know. I don't want to say that I'm not good at it. Uh, what I do want to say is it comes natural to her. I, I will say and be honest with you, I have to think about it. Like, like loving God, it, that's like just comes easy for me. Loving myself, well, we all have to deal with loving ourselves, but loving my neighbor, like thinking about the needs of my neighbor and stopping for them because I'm in a hurry sometimes, I will say I have to be intentional. But Kim has a value for people. I like to say she's not late. She just has more value for people than she has for time. <laughs> and that's good because, you know, sometimes I need to have more value for people than I have for time. Because when I give people my time, I'm showing them that I value them. So that's a good, good quality that Kim has. I want to share her with her. She's not late. You can use that if you want with your husband. I'm not late. I just value people more than I value time. All right. That's good. So here's the thing. We're going to this um, large, there was 10,000 people at this Valley Forge Convention Center. There was large gatherings of people where they would have up to 5,000 people in the auditorium. And we were invited in to be part of the healing room area. There was probably uh, about 300 booths that were set up and there were different kinds of healers. We came in with three teams. The way we would set this up is we'd have a team that would be on, we had a team that would be resting, and then we had a team that would be praying. So the prayers circulated around and prayed. The resters were had to get off the property. We wanted them off the property, go get coffee, go take a walk, just clear your head because it can be pretty intense in those environments, spiritually speaking. And then the people that were on, they were on for, I think, an hour or two hours each. Can't remember the schedule exactly, but it worked out really good. This particular one, though, we found out that we could rent a room and we rented a room that could seat 200 people at a new age festival. I was a speaker, a conference speaker at a new age conference. All right. And so I developed a seminar called the power of a life purpose words, power of a life purpose. And we would go at our booth and we would pray for the sick healing prayers. We would give them life purpose words and we would give them cleansing prayers. So cleansing prayers, healing prayers, and life purpose words. That was the phraseology we used. Next to us, in the booth next to us, was a, a nice man. His, his job was he, was, um, he practiced divination. 
he, he, uh, we asked him, what are you doing? And he said, this is the ancient, most ancient form of divination known to man. It's called bone reading. And he had these ancient bones. There were some sort of fossilized bones or something. And he would roll them out like dice or, you know, things. And, and he would read people's futures from this. And he said, this is divination. And he asked what we were doing. We told him we are believers in Jesus and that we're praying healing prayers. We were praying cleansing prayers and we were giving people life purpose words. And and initially, he wasn't very happy with us. He didn't like being next to us. And it happened a lot of times when we were there, people around us would say that they were, you know, their energies were getting messed up and they weren't having a good weekend. And so we weren't trying to mess with anybody, just us being there with their messed with people. Does that make sense? So here we are. I'm just telling you the real deal. This is what happened. All right. We weren't making enemies. We just, we didn't know that they just didn't know our, they were our friends yet. He didn't really like us that much, but Kim, People say, but God, I say, but Kim. So he didn't like us very much, but Kim met his wife, probably in the bathroom. I don't remember where, but she handed her a flyer because Pete Kim leaves people and ministers to them in the bathroom. It's just her place. She'll talk about it later. She handed her a flyer for our seminar on a life purpose. Now she didn't know that we were the same people, but when she got to our room, I was speaking and she saw me and she stood in the back and she was not happy with me. I could see her. She was standing in the back with her arms folded against the wall. And this room was filled with people. And we had every chair filled. We had 25 of our team members there praying. And then they were ready to minister to people afterwards. And I talked about the power of life purpose. And I went, I went right from Genesis, how God spoke to chaos, darkness, and emptiness. And then I started giving life purpose words. I said, I'm going to give life purpose words today, right here in this place. Now, you got to understand 180 of the people there were 100% non-church, non-believers, and many of them were extremely adversarial to us, including the lady standing in the back against the wall with her arms folded, scowling at me. And so I decided if I'm going to have unbelief in the room, I want to not get the unbelievers out of the room. I want to get the unbelief out of the unbelievers. And so I decided to pick the most unbelieving person I could find the most adversarial person I could find, because I figured, figured if I could flip her, I could flip the whole room. If I could have favor with my enemy, I could have favor with the entire audience. If I could make my frenemy into my friend, I would have favor. You hear what I'm talking about? Yes. So I looked at her and I said, ma'am, I want to talk to you in the back. I have a life purpose word for you. Now I have to tell you, I didn't have anything for her until I said that. When I said it, I, I saw her standing there and I said, I see children encircling around you. They're holding hands and they're going around you in a circle. And then I see dollars and I see them falling out of the sky. And I see you picking up all these dollars and handing them to the children. And I said, I believe this means that you're going to work for a social service agency in inner city Philadelphia, and you're going to help at-risk children get education, children that can't get education, and you are going to write hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of educational grants. And I want you, God wants you to know that he is going to provide the money for the children that you've written grants for. I mean, that was a huge risk. I just, it just rolled out of my mouth just like that, probably even more detail than I gave it, to be honest with you, because I don't remember all the details, but it was that detail. And she stopped, she pointed at me, and she said, can I say something right now? And I was scared for a moment. I got to tell you, first of all, I knew this lady didn't like me. She probably knew because I'll tell you a reason for in a second why she was my adversary. So she was the bone reader's wife. I didn't know it. She was a bone reader's wife. And she knew who I was when I walked in. She knew we were Christians immediately, but she didn't want to walk out for some reason. And she said, I want to tell you something. That's exactly what I do. I work for a social service agency in inner city Philadelphia. And I have written hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of grants that have not come back yet. And I said, you're going to see that money come. And she said, I believe it. <laughs> Guess what? The room opened up for the next two hours. Our team stayed there. I, I, I gave a word to a few more people. And then my, the team came up and they prayed for people for two hours. I was able to go down. Here's, here's listen to what happened. The bone reader's wife went right down to the bone reader. And she said, you need to have those Christians pray for you. 
And when I came down, they were there together and they asked me to come over and pray for him for some sickness. I don't remember what he had. It was some physical and it involved pain, physical pain, sickness. I don't remember if it was back. I don't remember anything, but we prayed for him and God healed him. Why? Because the Bible says, when your ways are pleasing to the Lord, he makes even your enemies be at peace with you. God turns your frenemies into your favor. Amen? You believe that can happen for you? I believe it can happen for you. Think about it right now. Kim's going to come in a minute, but I want you to throw up into the chat one takeaway from this brief teaching we talked about, and then I want to talk to you about how Jesus developed these three values and how it flipped frenemies into favor, how it flipped enemies into favor, okay? I'll be right back. I believe that God's going to do something in you that's going to turn, make your enemies at peace with you. I'll be right back. And we are back. All right. Look at, let's see what we got here. I love my frenemies into favor. That's right, Alberto. <laughs> you can say it in Italiano. <laughs> yes, frenemies into favor. I love that, Deepa. I was thinking about your experience. It's good. good. Faith working through love. That's right. Faith works through love. I love that. I yes. love the way you connected that, Patch. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, she's not late. She's you just are, you are muted. Oops. <laughs> unmute myself. Sorry about that if I was unmute, if I was muted. Uh, she's not late. She just values people more than she values time. There you go. <laughs> you now have it figured out. You got to shift your perspective, <laughs> right? Making friends in the bathroom shape. That's fun. You remember that experience? Which one? The one in uh, Philadelphia, the one we did. Remember? Oh, there was the a bunch of, one. Oh. There was a bunch of people that came to that meeting because of you, because you were I was out, out there handing out yeah. flyers, I think. Yeah, exactly. Meeting friends. Yeah. Exactly. Herman, we're mm -hmm. going to get to that scripture. Exactly right. Woo. We're going to get to that scripture. We're going to look at Matthew chapter five in just a minute we're going to talk about mm -hmm. developing the values of jesus that was cool we had a good time at that yes conference. we did yeah that was amazing so cool scary and awesome Do you remember anyone else you met there because there was a guy that uh, the um coaching guy the legacy coaching guy mm. that came because you invited him oh okay yeah. I, ca um, I called him out said i see the word legacy over your head and he had a ring with legacy oh, on that's it right. it's legacy coaching that's right pretty cool i just i just i think in that I think what tends to happen to me is um, I was honestly, I was trying to think of like the frenemies thing. Yeah. And um, I think one of the best things that I've learned through talking to random people anywhere, everywhere I go um, is that I just assume God's taught me that to assume favor. Yeah. And so I feel like even if somebody is not approachable initially, um, when you approach them, assuming favor, assume they want to talk to you, assume that you're going to make their day, you know, so something wonderful that I don't tend to, I don't tend to get a negative response, Yeah. but I do, I did find, um, at that particular event, I feel like I was probably more aware of the fact that one of these people is not like the <laughs> yeah. other. So, you know, I think when you go into those settings, yeah. though it was a while back, but when you go into those settings, you have to kind of be aware yes. that you're going to need to walk in the favor of God, yeah. remember who you are and those yeah. kind of things. So, so I might've been a bit more on my game with that right. particular event. And what I love about yeah. this topic, guys, we, we may not all ever find ourselves in that particular right. area, but we live in a pluralistic society. We live in a society whose values are completely different from ours. And if we assume favor, if we just realize, hey, these aren't my enemies. These are just my friends. These are my friends. They just don't know it yet, mm -hmm. right? Assume yes. favor. This is what Matthew 5, 21 and 24 says. And then I want to ask you a question, okay? Okay. You have heard it said of those of old that you shall not murder or whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say that whoever is angry at his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka or fool shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says you fool shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, this is the deal. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go away. 
and first be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. I want to talk about generosity. That's what I want to talk about here. You might say, well, they're talking about murder and words. Yeah, the reason that we have murder here, think about the first murder. Think about how murder came into the world. Cain and Abel, we talked about this last week. Cain offered an offering, but Abel offered the first fruits of his flocks. And so Cain became jealous of Abel's favor. And the reason God said, if you do what's right, won't you be blessed too? Won't you, won't you be blessed too? It's because he wasn't generous. He didn't give his first fruits mm. of the land. It just said he gave an offering from the fruit. And so what we have is that whenever I don't believe I have favor, I can become jealous of other people. Mm. So generosity right. breaks jealousy. Yeah. Generosity breaks jealousy. And so I want to ask you, if you, because you're one of the most generous people I know, like Aww. you don't, don't tell my wife you like her jewelry because she'll take it off and give it to you, right? You so, like my earring? <laughs> oh, yeah, cool, actually. <laughs> can you think of a time when you made someone um, happy, when you made someone happy uh, because they, like it opened the door for them when you gave them a, pe- a jewelry or gave them a gift and it opened the door for you to have a conversation with them? <sighs> like you're, there's so many times that you're generous with people. But can you just, what comes to your mm. mind that was like, oh, that person's response was just beautiful. The Bible says that mm. a gift opens a way for them into the, into the presence of the giver. Our, our gift opens our, a way to the presence of the great. Right. I don't like to use that as mip- manipulation. Like if I give a gift, the door opens for me. But right. I think it, ha- it does have to do with that. When I give a gift to someone, I'm generous with them. It opens up their heart. Can you think of a yes. time that generosity opened up someone's heart? Yes, now okay, I can. Perfect. Took me, took me, working on it. Okay. Got it. Um, so I was in a store and I saw this necklace, um, just with somebody's initial and it made me think, oh, I think that person would like that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, then they happened to be over at our house and I had the necklace. So it was great. Uh, but I feel like God, you know, prompted me on the necklace beforehand. And so I was able to just give them the necklace, um, with their initial on it. And I just feel like this was a young person and who's, who's worked with us. And I feel like it just made her feel yeah. special. Yeah. I just feel like it was, it was just some, a little thing, but because it was an initial, I think it had to do with just identity, security, confidence in who she is. And I think God just wanted to affirm her and not too long after that. And I I'm trying to think, um, but I, I just really feel like that was part of the journey with this particular person and now I have a name. I'm kind of hoping she's not watching just because, well, I didn't, I'm not saying her name. So anyway, she started calling me Mama Kim. That's right. And I just thought Aww, that was sweet. Nice. And if I track back, I'm like, you know what? There, there was some affection and even just some connection that was positive. Yes. And I feel like, you know, now I love, I love to get gifts for people, but, but contrary to what you might you know, think or believe about me because, right. you know, we, we might think of things differently. I am a shopper, yeah. but I do tend to think about, you know, um, I'm going to be spending some more money. I'm going to be getting this extra thing and whatever, but I, I just went ahead and, and got it anyway. I think it was probably a decent deal. Um, yeah, so, so I you got, believe you're, I got you this. hear the promptings of the Lord. Yeah, I, I got yeah. this item. Yeah. And sometimes I feel like it, you mentioned extra mile. Yeah. It's a, just a little extra mile. It's just a little extra cash. It's not a big, big deal. And, yes. then, and when the moment came up, I had that item and it was the sweetest, sweetest thing. It wasn't even a high priced item. I love that. It was the sweetest thing to have it. I love and just, that. Yeah. And so you being generous, you feel like opened up her heart and then yeah. she put, she had this, like could see you differently. Yeah. Like your mom and him, right? Yeah. Because it, because she, it changed her perspective. Mm-hmm. I love that. And it does say in Matthew 5, 40 to 44, it says, if anyone wants to take away your t- tunic, give him your cloak also. Right. And whoever compels you to go one mile, give him two, cool. right? I have a story about this. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. It's, um, this is more of a general story, but, but there was a season in my life where, um, I just feel like God was teaching me how to let go and just how to let go of, of things and just let go of, you know, whatever. And that was part of that. Like, if you like my bracelet and I, yeah. here you go, you know, take it off. And it's a joy. And it was so much fun. I had so much fun doing that, that one day. <laughs> Out of the blue, I heard God say to me so clearly, what if I want to bless you? And it literally, 
I'm not kidding. It just stopped me in my tracks. Now I may not have the quote exactly right, but that was the idea. And it was just like, ta-da, like a light is shining from heaven and God is because my heart was so tuned in with where he was, he was teaching me how to be generous. Oh, so nice. And so whenever I heard that, what if I want to bless you? Yep. I had to stop and think about it. So with all of this generosity, we want to remember, and I think you've touched so on it, good. but remember to um, also be generous to yourself because yeah. if you receive, if you're able to receive, then there's just this whole other level yeah. of giving out of a place of like, right. you've been blessed, you know, it feels amazing to be blessed. And if you bless out of that place, it's so much fun. And I, I was, I was getting really like, okay, they want the jacket. They want, you know, whatever <laughs> you want, like, here you go. And I was having fun with it, but I think God is always so good in keeping us balanced with, That's right. with our generosity. Absolutely. And you know, I've watched you I, 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 on one trip. That was mm -hmm. one of my favorite things to watch was somebody mm -hmm. that blessed Kim and with a a piece oh, yeah. of jewelry because she's blessed with so many people with jewelry. Yes. Just after you had said that, and it's you know it's one of those things where it's like, oh, I need to get insurance on that because. <laughs> and Jesus was generous. Look what it says in the mm. in um, the book in the gospel. It says that he had five thousand people mm -hmm. and five loaves and two fish, and he fed them all. But he left twelve over. Jesus was generous. Yes, and I love that, and I, I believe yeah. that we can be generous. And what it does is it. It shifts people's perspective of us. So Can I tell about you. that story? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I don't know. Um, I don't know if we have time for that. You, you, can you do it? It's quick? a short. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll tell it short. All right. I'll be generous with you. All right. Tell it yeah. Shortly. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah. So I just want to say this: that um, there, the gift that I was given was in another country, and um, this individual, his wife, actually um, had the idea like a year prior or something. And then when I came to that country, um, she remembered, she remembered that she had had this prompt from God to, to, for, to get me a gift. And I, I don't know how it worked between her and her husband, but anyway, the, um, the gift was something that actually had my name uh, in yeah, the jewelry. That's right, it did. And it's that was so just soul from my father. And yeah, it is beautiful. in the safe and I'm wanting lately to pull it out, but it's just, yeah. there's those things where I think, Sometimes pull something out that God try and ask Holy Spirit even to remind you of those moments where so God was generous to you. Yeah, God's generous because because sometimes you just need to to be reminded yeah, and, and pull generous. that item out and say, "Oh, thank you, Jesus, that you remembered me and yeah. you're so kind." Awesome, I love yeah. that generosity. The second thing is honor. I'm going to talk about honor mm -hmm. because Jesus said that you you should honor those who dishonored you, right? Right. So Jesus exemplifies this in um, Luke 19, where, where Zacchaeus is there. Zacchaeus was a tax collector. They were not held in high esteem at all. They were considered to be traitors to, to Jewish, because they were Jewish people, but they worked against the Jewish people with Rome. They were considered to be dishonest, right? Mm -hmm. So Jesus says to, Nick, uh, to Zacchaeus, he says, today salvation has come to your house because he is also, because he is a son of Abraham, for the son of man has come to seek and save that which was lost. Jesus didn't see Zacchaeus as a short dude, number one. He didn't see him as a mm. tax collector, number two. He saw him as a son of Abraham. And this guy that the rest of the establishment looked at as a traitor, as a short dude, as a bad guy, Jesus looked at him as a son of Abraham. So I want to talk yes. about honor and if you could think of a time, she's super good at this. So I could tell you the stories, but I want her to kind of think of them where you, you went into a store or around here and somebody just wasn't nice to you and how just your honor to them, your being kind to them was able to open them up and mm. get a new perspective. Can you think of that? Because you're so good at it. I tried really hard sitting over there, okay. but I, I will say um, one of the things that I've noticed yeah. And I think it's been, um, and maybe you guys will relate. I, it's been surprising to me. Sometimes somebody might look tough on the exterior. I can't really think of the exact moment right now, but I just, I think it's more. The post office lady? No? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. Okay, I can go there. So yes, I, uh, there's a lady at the post office who, when you, at first look, you might sense that there's a, you know, there's some, a wall or a couple walls up or something. And then you, uh, I talked to her and engaged with her. I talk, I've talked to her about her hair. Um, and 
I'm trying to think like anything else. If it, she told about me about her. she told me about her daughter. Okay, she told about me about her, her, her hair and her, and she talked to me about her daughter and she talked to me about her husband. And um, so one of the things that I've noticed is if you if I see somebody with a tattoo, I see somebody, you know, with with something that I can draw attention to. Maybe it's their, you know, it could be anything about them. Yep. Um, and I find that if I will talk to somebody even who looks kind of serious or they don't look like they're happy to be at their job um, or, you know, they don't, they don't really come off like they're really open. But if you approach them with a, a question about who they are, maybe um, and what, what they look like or how they're dressed or their name, a lot of times today, tonight, earlier, I was talking to somebody about her name. Um, and sometimes it's just drawing attention. I think frequently I use the name yeah. um, because you'll, you'll be interested to find out some people really don't like their name. Yeah. And when you draw attention to it and you say how wonderful or how beautiful their name is, you can bring healing in that area and you can really just bring new truth to them that actually your name is beautiful and it's a wonderful I name that. Uh, that you have. And so yeah. I, I think just in general, I would say um, one of the things that I've learned in the process of talking to random people is if you talk to somebody who doesn't look approachable, again, assume favor yes. and go ahead and talk to them, but ask them a question about themselves. See if you can get them talking about themselves. Yes. Because a lot of people just need to know that I matter, I'm seen. Yeah. And I feel like most people, if not everybody, if you'll go that direction and it, it ends up being about them and not about you, it's going to turn something and shift something in the atmosphere. It's so and, good. And sometimes maybe I didn't experience the angry comment or the whatever because something shifted yeah you preempted it yeah so what's the difference between what she's talking about and flattery because i could say oh your hair is really nice now can you give me some stamps <laughs> or oh wow you know i heard right. your daughter's a good girl so so flattery is complimenting someone to get something from them yep. but honor is is c complimenting someone or doing something for someone so that you can add value to, to them, them, right? Mm -hmm. So one is to get value from them, the other is to give value mm -hmm. to them. And so that's what honor is. Right. Honor is, and, and in fact, it's actually speaking into a, something that cannot be seen physically, but is perceived spiritually. Right. So I tell the story sometimes, mm -hmm. I, was, I, was, um, I was during basketball season a few years ago, I was flying into a conference to University of Kentucky wearing my University of Connecticut hat. And Connecticut had defeated um, University of Kentucky to get into the finals of the basketball game. Okay. Well, I flew into Kentucky mm -hmm. and I and I went to a restaurant to meet my friends for the conference right from the airport. Didn't know I was still wearing this hat. And I'm on the turf of the University of Kentucky, going to this uh, into the restaurant, and this guy stops me angry and drunk and says, "You're wearing a Yukon hat." Basically, he's like pointing at me. "You're wearing a Yukon hat." He's confronting me. And immediately I stop in my tracks, not sure what to do. I get a word of knowledge that he's got a bad shoulder. I said, you have a bad shoulder. And he said, what the bleep? He didn't say a, a praise word. He said a not good word. And I said, you have, you have a problem in your right shoulder. I'm going to pray for you. And, and he let me pray for him. He got healed. And he actually followed me into the restaurant and gave his life to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now there's an example where I needed to actually protect myself. <laughs> so it was, so the word yeah. of, of honor, the, this, the word of what uh, knowledge was actually self-defense. Mm -hmm. But in that case, when you can see the, the gold in someone, when you can see the good that God wants to do for them, in spite of the evil that wants to be in them, that's the same thing as leaving your gift at the altar mm. and being reconciled to your brother. It's like, don't go to God and say how good you are if you can't see the good in your brother, basically. So be honoring to someone else before you bring your honor to God. Right, hon? Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Cool. So we talked about generosity, honor. Does that make sense, guys? Yep. See the gold in them. So encouragement. This is my favorite here for Kim. This, this is just, this oozes out of her. If you cut her, she's going to bleed encouragement. Don't cut her. Um, <laughs> but, you know, encouragement we get from first, first Corinthians 14, three, that those who prophesy, prophesy for encouragement. That word encouragement is a really special word. It's the word oikodome, which means to build the house, literally to build the house. So when the Bible says prophecy is for encouragement, it means prophecy is to build the house. Jesus says this, you've heard it said, you shall love your neighbor, hate your enemy. This is Matthew 5, 43 to 45, the end of it. I just went through the whole 
passage here. But I say, love your enemies. They're your frenemies. Bless <laughs> those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons and daughters of your father in heaven. Mm. Now, bless those who curse you. This is super cool. The word bless there is two words. It's you and logios. The word you means good or, um, yeah, means good. And the word logios means means um, word, good word, good word. That's a good word. That's really what it means. But it's also where you get the word eulogy, eulogios, eulogios. So when you give somebody, you know, isn't it funny how we always say good stuff about people when they die? Yes. Why can't we give somebody a eulogy yeah. before they die? I did that's, that. That's what encouragement is. Okay, tell me about it. So <laughs> give it, so encouragement is giving somebody a eulogy to their face. That's yes. what encouragement is. All right, tell me what you did. Oh, okay. So it just was cool because um, there the other day, well, uh, okay, so we have friends from when I was younger and the mom now um, has gotten older and she's not doing well. And um, she's been just given with weeks to live. Yeah. And so it's really heavy on my heart. And you know how you're walking through the process and just praying for the family and things like that. And um, the other day, I just felt prompted to um, send out a, um, I'm just wondering if they're listening, but I think it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I felt prompted to just basically send out like a, a note, just type out a note for the mom um, and just basically wanted to present my Thanksgiving because I'm just super thankful for this person in my life. One of the kindest people that I knew in my childhood and, and since then even have met uh, one of the nicest people. And I'm just so grateful. My heart just wanted to express that. And so um, I just typed this out and I sent it to her son. And I said, if it's appropriate, can you read it to her? And it was basically like, I don't, you know, I don't know how close you are in your process of running to the arms of Jesus, but I just wanted to thank her and that kind of thing. And, um, and he, he did read it to her, which was, a, I think the first time I've ever done that. And I think God's been showing me lately, like, don't be afraid to step into that space where someone's passed. Love it. Oh, and this one was where someone was, you know, close to, to going to heaven. And it's just like, how do I approach that in a way that wouldn't be offensive, but would be like, I see, I want to tell you now, you know, you mean a lot to me and you'll always be in my heart. And, so um, and so I feel like I processed that with just the Lord first. And then her son read it to her and she said it was beautiful. And I think, um, you know, just on her journey, hopefully a lot of other people are also giving her encouraging words yes. and encouraging her before, before she passes. And if it's her time and God takes her on, I'm sure afterward, there'll be some beautiful things. Yes. Said. But we have an opportunity to tell somebody while they're still with us. That's so cool. Yeah. I have a, I want to share stories. Okay. As I love that. I love that story. That's so amazing. But I, as you were telling it, I was thinking about and somebody wrote here, give a, a living eulogy. Yes. It was a, a, several years ago, I was celebrating 20 years of ministry, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember, I, well, I'm, I'm not, I wasn't a pastor. I'm not a pastor. I, been, I wasn't pastoring at the time. And I remember thinking, oh man, who's going to throw me a party for my 20th anniversary of, of, of ministry? Like who's going to, you know, buy me a card and say, yay, welcome, you know, Pastor Rob, 20 years of ministry. Congratulations. You made it, you know? And I was just having that conversation with God, like who's celebrating me? I, I probably was a little mopey, but I don't know if I was that depressed. I was just a little mopey. And, and I felt like the Lord said, celebrate those who poured into your life over the last 20 years. Yes. You know, bless yeah. those who didn't bless you. Bless those, bless others, and you'll be blessed, right? That's and good. so I, I thought about, there were five pastors that I had worked for. One was my father-in-law, one was my father. And there, so there are five major men that, that um, mm. spoken in my life. And, you know, at first I thought, well, you know, they really didn't father me other than my father and my father-in-law. They didn't father me. You know, they, I was their employee, but right. the Lord's like, no, you honor your father and your mother, not because they were perfect, but you honor them. And when you mm. honor them, all goes well with you. Right. So I wrote a letter to all five of them, only my father mm. and my father-in-law wrote back or responded back to me, but I thanked them. I thanked them, each of them individually for things that they taught me. One taught me the love to read books. The other one taught me the love for a day off. That was good. That's something I needed to learn. Take a day <laughs> off. My wife was happy about yes. that. You know, the other one was the value for family. And I thanked them. And you know, what happened is that th that year things shifted in relationships 
and spiritual elders started mm-hmm. to come around me in the body of Christ like they had not before. And I think it was because I took a moment to honor, to eulogize, to give a good word to those who had deposited yeah. something in me. And God brought new people to deposit stuff in me. Is, that, is this making mm-hmm. sense to you guys? So it's not just saying here that, you know, you should love your enemies. Mm-hmm. It's saying you should find the value in people who didn't value you well. Right. Find the value in people that it's challenging you, challenging for you to see the value. Yes. It's not just loving your enemies. It's understanding that your frenemies are your friends. <laughs> I want to, I actually yeah, want to bring something thanks, up forward. Yeah. I, I feel like um, what you're talking about is that was a prompt. The Holy Spirit prompted you to do that. Yep. And I feel like that was really beautiful. And then you followed through yep. and then there was a blessing for you on the other side. Yep. And I feel like so many, so many times I feel like what I'm doing and being intentional, I'm not being intentional because I know that if I do this, then, oh, wow, then I'm going to be so blessed. I, I love the fact that I'm going to be so blessed, but it's actually a lot of fun to bless somebody is it's fun to see somebody it's fun to speak into someone's life it's fun to give to somebody so i feel like when you partner with god in that space of you're gonna love and bless people he's so happy to like partner with you you don't have to say oh god can you help me if you want to love somebody and bless somebody i feel like holy spirit is right there to show you how to do it to team up with you and i find that the more I do this as a way of life, the easier and easier it becomes. That's and so one of the things I remember my mom saying to me, she's like, people just talk to you. <laughs> like she was saying how they, cause they start to, they do tell me stuff. And I don't always want to, you know, hear all of the things, yeah. but I feel like when people, when you see somebody and you love them and you mm-hmm. honor them, like you're saying that people, they feel seen and they feel like, like you can actually see them and like seeing the gold. in them. I think somebody put here in the chat, Mm -hmm. we're seeing the gold in that person. We're seeing them the way that God sees them. Absolutely. And then what ends up happening is they begin to feel safe. And sometimes they will share things with you because they feel like this person sees me, this person values me. Yeah. On the flip side, if you are struggling with knowing who you are and valuing yourself, it is going to be challenging to look at somebody in the face and love them really well and yeah. see them well. So I feel like one of the one of the best things that you can do is um, get to know your father. Yeah. Is get to know your father and receive his affirmation. So going back to the the you know being able to the father saying, "Can I bless you? Is it like is it okay if I bless That's you?" Good. Is is allowing your father to bless you and love you, and out of that place, not a place where I'm trying to like love you so that I can achieve this or even do the right thing. But it's more like out of the abundance of being so loved by my father and knowing who I am when I walk into that store. And sometimes you might have to, you might have to remind yourself, you might, you might say, I don't, I don't know. I'm not feeling confident in who I am today. And you might have to ask your father, Hey, can you take me up into your confidence and how you see me today Perfect. so that I can love people in front of me well? Excellent. I love that. So love the Lord, your God. Yes. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Just what we've been talking yes. about. So good. Yes. In just a minute, uh, I'm going I'm to give you um, some scriptures on how you can build favor with your frenemies. And then we're going to have Kim, because I believe, I believe there's an impartation here. I believe you're going to see favor in places you haven't seen it. Yes. You're going to have favor with people that you haven't had it. And I believe you're going to be empowered, even through these testimonies, to pray for those who are your enemies and watch miracles happen, to to be generous to those who have been stingy with you, Mm -hmm. all right? So I want to give you um, a couple of scriptures, then Kim's going to pray. All right. Favor with your frenemies. Here we go. (laughs) Proverbs 16, 7, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Oh, come on. My, say my enemies are going to be at peace with me, right? Yes, because God is pleased with me. me, my enemies will be at peace with me. Because God is mm-hmm. pleased with me, my enemies will be at peace with mm-hmm. me. Genesis 29, 4 and 5, Joseph and Potiphar. So Joseph mm-hmm. found favor in his sight and served him. Serving people brings favor. Then he yes. made him overseer of all of his house and he put everything under his authority. Serving people brings favor and releases authority. 
Mm. Daniel 1, 9. Da now God had brought Daniel into favor with the goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs. So Daniel had favor with people who had authority. Daniel had favor mm. with people who had position. So God wants to give you favor with people in position. In Luke 2, 52, Jesus increased in wisdom, yes. stature, and favor. Yes. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to make your mm -hmm. declaration that um, God's at peace with me, or God is pleased with me, so my enemies will be at peace with me. I have favor with those mm -hmm. uh, at, that I serve, and then they are going to give me authority, and that I have favor with those that are in positions so mm -hmm. that I can bring God's presence. And Jesus grew in favor with God and man. I am growing with favor in God and man. Whichever yeah. one of those hits you, I want you to declare it. And then Kim's going to pray. All right. Mm, Go that's for it. so good. Yeah. And, and um, I just want to, I want to encourage you guys that we, as you were talking, it's like, well, God brought Daniel into the favor and goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs. And God knows sometimes you don't even know who you need favor with. That's true. And one of the things I like to think about is the idea of God. He's looking down at all of the people and he knows everybody. Mm -hmm. So you might think I need favor with this individual or that individual or right. this person at work or whatever it is. Right. But God knows who's the every, one. he right. knows everybody. He's the ultimate connector. Yep. of the universe and the knows, eunuch wasn't the chief of the eunuch wasn't the king no he didn't need favor with the king no there. he needed favor with the chief of the eunuch that's right that's and good. so god knows who you need favor with and i find i think it's very freeing to love everybody i think you yes. probably have some stories of yep. if we if we went on another hour of the um so there's times where you serve in a situation that doesn't look favorable mm -hmm. and yet you see favor come in from over other here places in another area. You sow here, yes. you reap here. You see that crazy, happen a but lot. it's the kingdom all the yes. time. Yes. Yep. And so in the ministry, you know, serving in this little spot that seems insignificant and then see a big blessing come out of that or yes. however it is. And I think when you live a generous life, good, you don't have to worry about how it's going to come to you or how who it's going to come through because God knows everybody. God's going to do this for them. I feel he's, it. Yeah. yeah he, he's I, going to do this for you. So I just want to finish this thought. I'm just he, excited. <laughs> he knows. I know. It's so exciting. He knows everybody around you. He knows everybody you will meet and he mm -hmm. knows everybody you need to meet. Amen. So if you could be in touch with somebody who knows everybody, you know, the one who wants to know the most popular yeah. kid, yeah. whatever it is, you, you've, if you know God, you, he knows everyone. So get yes. connected with your father Yes. And really know, really trust his heart that he see, he, I want to encourage somebody tonight that he sees your generosity. You cannot, you cannot, we've, there's that old saying, you can't outgive God. It's so true. If you are in a situation where you say, I've served, I've served, I've served, I've served, I've loved, yes. I've loved, I've loved, I've loved, I've, I've encouraged, I've encouraged, I've encouraged. I get it. I understand what you're saying. Yes. I've had to do this a lot, but I believe that if you will allow this, if you will say, God, I'm going to give you my service. I'm going to give you that encouragement. I'm going to give it to you. Yes. You will see God pour out a blessing. You cannot contain. Yes. And you will see him just like that gift. I got that jewelry. It was like, I gave away this and that and the other jewelry. And then God gave me something that I would not have anticipated or expected on that trip. And he knew what would touch my heart. So he knows that for you. He knows yes. that he knows the hairs on your head. So he knows what's going to bring you great joy. Yes. So give, 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 serve, yes. serve, serve, and watch him bring yes. the increase. Amen. Yeah. Let's so pray. we're going to pray it. Yes. Pray. All right. All right. So God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters. I yes. thank you for our, the family of God that is listening and is active in this relationship with you. Yes. I thank you that we're connected, God, that, that our, our uh, paths have crossed, God, and that our destinies are connected, God, and that you see every single seed that has been planted yes. in our children, in our families, in our neighbors, in our frenemies, and those that <laughs> have, uh, have treated us poorly. God, we've continued to love, and I just pray that every person who has continued to love through heartache and sorrow and weariness, tiredness, they've continued to love. They've continued to sow. They've continued to pour yes. um, with your strength. God, I ask that you would bring the increase. Let there yes. be an increase, God, more than they could ask, more than they can yes. think, more than they can imagine. And I pray, God, for a new level 
of even for all of us, God, a yes. new level of seeing the person in front of them, yes. in front of us on our path and blessing them. God, open our eyes to see them the way that you see them. And even tonight, God, I pray that some that are struggling to see themselves the way that you do, God, that you would show them who they are in Christ. And yes. I pray that when we come into contact with anyone, we would assume favor, yes. not so that we can be puffed up and look so great, but God, we would assume favor so that we can touch them yes. and bring you into their lives. God, as we do that, would you transform people yes. in front of us? Would you show us one of the things that I've you show me, God, is that you love people tremendously. Yes. I love seeing that when I partner with you, I get to see that you love people. And yes. so I pray, God, tonight that you would infuse us with a new passion for people, yes. a new passion to love people the way you do, a yes. new passion to be intentional every day, no matter how busy we are, help us to see people the way you do. And to bring the words of life in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Guys, throw up in the chat one of your takeaways. Here's the passages again. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 16, 7. Genesis mm -hmm. 39, 4 and 5. Joseph. Daniel 1, 9. Daniel. Luke 2, 52. Jesus. God's going to make your enemies at peace yes. with you. Let's share with you a few announcements real quick here. We have um, some cool things going mm -hmm. on that we want to share with you right here. And boom, here we go. And if you'd like to give tonight, we've made it super easy for you. There's a form here right on thegatheringct.org. Thegatheringct.org. If you go mm -hmm. there, you can um, share with any gift that you'd like to. We'd appreciate it. Uh, if you're part of our online community, we thank you so much. Also, we want to encourage you, you can come to the next gathering here in Fairfield, Connecticut, September the 26th. Registration is open right now. You can go right to thegatheringct.org. You can click this link and you can register. We'll see you there on the 26th. If you know someone that needs to join us or if you're watching by YouTube and you'd like to be live on our Tuesday nights, you can join these Tuesday night meetings by yes. clicking right there. And if you'd like to join the gathering email list, uh, we'll send you a free ebook. You can just go right there and click mm. that and we would love to share that with you all right mm. thanks guys thanks for hanging out with us tonight we're going to pray for you in just a minute uh we have some words for a few people mm -hmm. kim's going to start us out in just a moment let me just as she gets ready to share with someone let's see what your takeaways are tonight knowing my identity that he loves me i'm going to assume favor yes. i'm going to uh the best way forward is to prophesy over the diviner's wife that's right god Divinous. makes my enemies at peace with me because he's pleased with me and it keeps switching my audience i apologize my takeaway is identity in christ i don't know what that means assume favor values of jesus mm -hmm. that's right honor generosity encouragement encouragement build the house eulogy good word giving someone a live eulogy mm. that's super super cool all right kim you have some eulogies tonight some encouraging Ooh. words for people all right I'll let you start okay so alberto alberto i just um i just have this to share with you out of nehemiah um go and enjoy choice food sweet drinks be still for this is a holy day. Do not grieve. And I, mm, I just, um, I like that. yeah, I just feel like this was an encouragement to me, apparently at one time. And I, I really like the idea of, I like Starbucks. So I like that sweet, sweet drinks, I like my lattes, but I want to encourage you that, um, this is, I just feel like God is just clearly saying to me, this is not a time to grieve. This is not a time to grieve. And I know there are moments and there are seasons where we do want to walk through grief and we do want to actually feel that. And we want to walk through that with God and with our, with our family and friends. But I just feel like God is saying, I have, I have shifted your season yes. and it is joy. This is the words I got. And it comes from an old hymn, joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Yeah. And, uh, and the other line of that is, and the half has never yet been told. And I feel like yes. God is like, you don't even begin to know what I have planned for you. And I, I just believe that tonight God is like, kind of like where my husband was on the edge of his seat because he wanted us to get to the next part of praying for you and blessing you. That's how God feels about you. Yes. He is like, I just, I can't wait for you to get to like almost the next scene of the movie. Like, I can't wait till you get to the next scene because yes. God has, he's just, he's just been, 
I just feel like he's been storing up for you blessings and he's about to just pour them over your head. And yes. I feel like it's going to impact you. It's also going to impact those that you love in your family yes. and also your friends. And so I, I know yes. sometimes, sometimes we might hear somebody say, Hey, soon this is going to happen. I just feel like within the next six months, God is just pointing to that time frame. within the next six months to experience, you're going to experience a shift mm -hmm. and that you're right. going to see there's financial blessing. I believe that God has for you. And I also believe that he says, I know you've seen increase, but I, I'm going to continue. I'm going to really, he just wants to, to blow your mind, blow your socks off. However you want to yes. think of that with his generosity to you. And I, I just want to affirm to you. I feel like you have been generous to other people, especially those closest to you. Yes. And sometimes it's the most challenging. I feel like God has said, I've seen your heart. I've seen you be generous to those who are the closest to you. Yes. And he just wants to, re there's the Bible talks about how your reward is in his hand. Yeah. And I feel like that reward that you have coming is going to come yes. from your father. Amen. And she yes. does have any clue, Alberto, because mm -hmm. Alberto is one of my one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one mentoring students. And mm -hmm. so we've talked about many of the things that oh, she good. spoke about. Yep. Even all the way down mm -hmm. to going out to dinner and, and the, the <laughs> financial blessings that are coming. So bless mm -hmm. you. Alberto. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was so good. That was so good. There was someone. The only thing I knew is about land because we talked no, about. Okay. So Dahlia, 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 mm -hmm. Dahlia. I, when I saw your name, um, I kept seeing a neck connected to a shoulder. Mm -hmm. And I just want you to type in here if you need any healing in your body, particularly if it's a neck yes. to the shoulder. Yes, yes. And it could be anyone else on here. I just need to know but mm. I saw Dahlia. So I want to take a chance to see if it's Dahlia, but anyone that you have a, a problem, the right side of your neck goes down to your right shoulder. Uh, I need you to just uh, put it in the chat here so I can see it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then Dahlia, I still have a word for you. I do need healing. Okay. Um, is it on, in your neck or your shoulder Dahlia, or is it somewhere else? Cause we're going to pray for you for healing, but I want to know if it, um, who has that word of knowledge. Okay. Yes. Me neck, shoulder, mm. always sore right side, Katie. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's you. Dolly, you tell me I do as well. Okay. A bunch of mm. them. Yes. Yes. Okay. A lot of people wow. right, right side of the neck and shoulder. Good friend praying for them. Perfect. Mm -hmm. We're going to pray for all you people. Tell me Dahlia. Mm. Um, let me know Dahlia what you need. Right mm. next shoulder affects heart. My goodness. A lot of people mm. in the right I'm shoulder. Because my shoulder was bothering me yeah. earlier right. today. We're, so just maybe that was, and that's not all the time. All right. We're going to so pray. Maybe, yeah. So father, right now in Jesus name, mm -hmm. we just declare right now healing. Yes. We say your government is on your shoulder mm -hmm. and we just say any attacks against the government of God in our life. Yeah. And anything that's swart, thwarted the government mm. of God, nor we don't speak against the government of the earth, but we declare that the kingdoms of this mm. world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and yes, of his God. Christ. And we declare right now, particularly those that are called to pray, mm. intercede uh, mm. for government things, that there would be a breaking off of yes. anything that's affected the right side of their neck and mm -hmm. their shoulder. In the yeah. name of Jesus, I speak to pinch nerves off yes, in, Jesus in Jesus name. name. Shoulders be loosened Healing now Jesus. in Jesus name. Lift mm -hmm. up your shoulder now, lift it up. And I believe God's healing you right now. But there's also someone um, that's got a, um, an issue with a pinched nerve in their neck that affects their, even their ability to lift up your shoulder, lift up mm -hmm. your arm right now because um, yeah. God's doing it. And he's having pain in his shoulder. Bless him. Kiera, yeah. just go pray for him right now. Tell him to lift up his shoulder. Yeah. Just yell at him in a room. Yeah. Tell him, lift, lift up, up your guys. shoulder. Up your we arm. speak to Dahlia right now in mm -hmm. Jesus' name. I speak to that jaw, that hernia. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, we speak right now, complete healing. Mm. We say Antonio. right now, anything that's affecting her head and her mm -hmm. neck, all the way from the jaw in Jesus name, yes, God. dizziness go dizziness in the name go. of Jesus. Yep. God, we thank you. Anybody mm. that feels God touching you right now, come on, let us know in the chat. Yes. Lift up your arm, check it out, move your neck, yes. see if it's loosened up. Let's pray. Right? You, Let's Jesus. believe right now in Jesus, you, Jesus name, healing come Yes, in Jesus name. Mm -hmm. Tell me if you're feeling it. Tell me if you're feeling warmth, mm -hmm. if you're feeling God touch you in Jesus name. Mm -hmm. God, thank you. In Jesus name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Janie. Amen. Full mobility. Yay. Yes. Amy, good job. He feels presence pricking mm. on. Yes. yes. Deborah. yes good God. job. I feel God's hands on my shoulders mm. thank you jesus warmth is loosening amanda yes, great thank job you, thank, thank you, you. the feeling of cloudiness and dizziness leave in jesus yes. name jesus god name. we thank you for that janice mm. irby 
Um, I just feel like the Lord is opening up your eyes to the things of the spirit that God is giving you the ability to see things and understand things, particularly in the night season. There's dreams that are coming. Ah, Dahlia, yes. warmth and heat. Amen, Dahlia. Woo, Woo Jesus name. You, and Janice, I really feel like too, there's something, uh, I don't know if it's in your abdomen, Janice, just let me know in the, ch in the chat if you have anything in the digestive area or in your abdomen that you're praying for, just so mm. we can know. It's so difficult with the chat, but let me mm -hmm. know, Janice, this is for you. Or anyone else, that you have yeah. issues, digestive issues, abdomen issues, anything with fibroids. I believe God's healing mm. you. God's power is yes. on here today. Yes, God. Healing powers. Thank God's you, touching Lord. people. Thank you, God. Okay, Padge, digestive mm -hmm. issues. Allie, yes. Healing Christina, yes. Uh, let's see. Neck, not mm. so tight now. Digestive. That's great. That's great. I mean, lungs improvement, mm. fibroids. Okay, we're going to pray for those mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Digestive, Frank, Frank digestive. We're going to mm -hmm. pray for that. Robbie, mm -hmm. digestive, digestive mm -hmm. issues. Sally. Yeah. Janice, tell me if you have any um, physical issues that mm. we need to pray for, but we're going to pray for anybody. Janice, abdomen, mm -hmm. digestive wow. issues. Being, oh, that's just, she's just repeating it. Mm -hmm. So Lord, thank you right yeah. now. Anyone dealing with mm. um, digestive issues, fibroids, mm. in the name of Jesus, yes, any thing in the abdomen we declare be healed in jesus name yeah. we speak right now spirit of fear mm. out in jesus, in name, jesus name that's causing um too much acid in the stomach much. because of the um, increased cortisol in the yeah. system we just declare right mm -hmm. now in jesus name in jesus we speak name. right now to abdominal cancer get out in the get name out. of jesus mm -hmm. in the name of in jesus, jesus name. utis out mm -hmm. bladder be healed yes, in jesus God. name we mm -hmm. speak right now, tumors disappear mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. Yes, God, we God. thank you. Let the touch mm -hmm. of God, if you're feeling healing or if you're feeling yeah. heat, let us know Jesus. you're feeling the warmth of God. I feel yeah. like, I feel like wow. there's like a warmth in my stomach yeah, right now. I just feel, <laughs> is it <laughs> really? <laughs> Woo. Something like, something's going on. Something's going on Jesus. around here, guys. <laughs> we just speak, Aaron, we bless your abdomen you, in Lord. Jesus' yes. name. We bless yes. you. You are not cursed in yes, Jesus' name. That's right. We speak right now. Fibroids yeah. go in Jesus' name. Cancer go that's right. in Jesus' name. Yeah, thank God, you, God, we just thank you that that spirit of infirmity has no place. And if there's anyone um, yes. who who has had this in their family line, like on and on and on yes. the same thing, the same thing. The Antonio's same thing. got such an aesthetic. Yeah. Amen. We just think, thank you God yes. for a hundred percent healing in Jesus name and no more spirit of infirmity is yes. allowed in that family, Jesus in those family name. lines of God. We just release a blessing. Yes. We just release healing presence of God. We, we yes. thank you God for miracles. Yes. Thank you for signs and wonders. We thank you Lord that you are starting something new tonight. God, yes. that you're you're just starting like your blood. Call is, up in the glob, gallbladder. He's feeling yeah. warmth in it. Yes. We just bless the gallbladder yeah. in Jesus' just, name. Thank you for your blood that is covering the, every <laughs> situation, Lord, that has presented, <laughs> even for generations. Glory God, bombs. we thank you that you're thank you that you're stopping a family line dysfunction. God, you are bringing yes. something new. Something new is going to happen, and it's going to start a whole train of healing and health in family lines, even tonight in Jesus name, in Jesus thank name, you, Father. In Jesus name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Ha ha. Generational healing. That's yes. right. Tell yes. us what's going on. If yes. you feel the warmth in your abdomen, your gallbladder, mm -hmm. tell us what's going on. If you, and also, uh, if you get a report from the doctor, send us a testimony yes. to the gathering, the gathering mm -hmm. ct.org. And we're going to turn Kim loose here in a second, but I'll, I'll keep an eye on the chat. You okay. go, go ahead. Okay. So, um, Herman McMichael, I have a word for you, um, out of Psalm 106. And I I've put here in my, I actually did a Bible journal of this, a plague broke out among them, but Phineas stood up and intervened and the plague was checked. This was credited to him as righteousness for endless generations to come. And I just feel like, yes. I, Herman, I don't know if, if you're like in the medical field, I, I sense that you're in the medical field, but I just, whatever it is, I feel like God wants to do something um, in you and through you that's going to shift. It's going to shift illness. It's going to shift sickness. It's going to shift things yes. that have been coming after people for generations. I feel like there's something just yes. in my spirit is the word organic. 
And I feel like there's something that yes. you're going to do with organic and with farming. There's something <clears throat> you're going to do that's going to bring health and healing yes, in more Jesus. of a natural way. And I just, I just want to bless you because I feel like you, um, I feel like you've stood in the gap for some people. You've yes. helped some people already. And God wants to just, he's lighting a fire yes. inside you and, and in your giftings uh, that you have. There's a, he's yes. just setting you on fire. And he's just saying, just run, just run with what I've given you to yes. take the steps that you need to take to push something out to stay, take the next step. And I feel like um, he just wants you to know that when you stand up, when you stand up, you don't let the enemy, you know, pull you down. You stand up, you take that step forward and it's going to be credited to you as righteousness. And God is going to do, he's going to shift something like dramatically different in and around you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Someone just asked, um, do we offer one-on-one -on -one mentoring uh, anymore? Uh, yes, there. If you go mm. to the website ascendministries.net yeah. or just ascendacademy.net, you'll see the offerings there. Yes, mm. there is a one on one mentoring option that you can sign up for. Guys, we love you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Yes. Thanks for coming this week. Next week, we're going to go for this more. I really believe that God wants mm. to release miracles Amen. and healings even Amen. online. Yes. So we bless you guys. Have an bless amazing night. So great tonight. Wasn't that great with Kim? Oh, thanks, guys. Woo. Thank you for listening. Go get them. It's going to be a fun favor. week. Assume favor. That's right. See you later. Bye, guys. Bye.